I really like these old books because sometimes you know I like what watching old movies. It's really fun when you uh, find it, look at them, and see that they got use a lot of models from the TV show. Uh, because this is what this looks like to me. I this is another water um another not watercolor old painting by Russell Harlan Harlan and this is what it looks like. See where I get the old movies? Because I, I watch really old movies. Alright, the caption says, While Cain and Abel were both offering sacrifices on their altars, God sent fire from heaven and accepted Abel's offering. This made Cain jealous and angry with his brother. And of course, this part is called Part 2, Story 8, The First Quarrel. And let's get started with reading it. Okay. The second little boy whose name is found in the Bible is Abel. He was born fairly soon after Cain, and the two grew up together. They must have played in the woods, paddled in the streams together, Perhaps uh, they were the first little boy, little boys to make a bow and float it in the nearest pond. What wonderful time they had in those far off days when the world was young and very and so very very beautiful. These two boys were probably leaders in their large, ever-growing family. Younger brothers and sisters look up to them and followed their example, which is no doubt why their names and none of the others are recorded, because they were leaders, and they were leaders. The way they lived and acted became very important. At one, as time went on. The boys grew to man, manhood. They turned to different interests. Cain loved to grow things. The Bible says he was a tiller of the ground. Perhaps he invented the first plow. And how thrilled he must have been to gather, to gather, and we got to go to the next page, seed and sold them and watch them grow into strong, sturdy Plants, beautiful plants. Abel was, we are told, preferred to work with animals. And he was a keeper of sheep, the first shepherd. And I imagine he took most loving care of his wee lamb. Really says we. Okay. Both boys were had been told had been told about God. Most of Eve's bedroom stories were probably about Eden and all that happened there. From the glory, glorious days in the wonderful garden were her most precious memories. So these boys all knew well all, as well as her other children Learn of the create the loving creator of the devil's sub subline trans temptation of how she yielded to it and all and of all the sad things that happened afterward. Best love of all Eve's stories was the one about God's promise that someday. One of her children would crush the serpent's head and lead the family back to their garden, their Eden home. Every child must have hoped that he might be that hero. The children learned too that they that they should give offerings 
offerings to God to show their love and respect for him and their faith in his promise to help them. Time and time again, they were told that sin is as hateful, was so hateful that only by death, the shedding of blood, can it be purged away. In the process of time, Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord, and Abel he brought the firstlings of his flock and of fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering, but unto Cain and his offering he had no respect. Just how God showed respect to Abel's offering. The Bible doesn't say. It will, it may well, it may well be that fire came from heaven upon Abel's dead little lamb and consumed it. Anyway, there it was a difference. It was clear that Cain's offering of fruit, nuts, and vegetables was not welcome. Why did God make this difference? Why did hey, bug, Why did God make this difference? Why did he have respect for one offering and not the other? Because of the shedding of blood, shedding the blood of the lamb, Abel reveal, revealed that God understood revealed that he understood God's plan to defeat Satan and win back for man his Eden home. That would that it would only be by the death of the Lamb of God, the very Son of God himself. Cain no doubt understood that this just as well as Abel, but he couldn't see why God, his offering would not do just as well as his brothers. And when he saw that God had respect to Abel's offering while ignoring his own, he filled with jealousy. And Cain was very wroth. And he, his countenance fell. And he is, that is, he looked as he felt. Very angry indeed. God saw those ugly looks. As he sees all look, ugly looks today. He said to Cain, Why art thou wroth? And why is thou countenance fallen? If thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted? And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door. Oh, King James again. God was trying to be fair. He didn't play favorite. Cain had just made the same. Cain had just the same choice as Abel. Had he had brought the same offering, God would have gladly has accepted it as he had accepted Abel. But Cain was in no mood to be reasoned with. It. He was so angry he couldn't see straight. He thought he he thought that he was right and God was wrong, and he was sure Abel had played some trick to win God's favor. By and by he went over to where Abel was standing and in the field and talked with Abel his brother. What was said we have and then that's where it ends right there. And we have a beautiful illustration, water code illustration down to the bottom. This part is of uh, Cain, and then this side is of Abel. 
with his chest. See, what he said, we have not been told, but we were sure it was nothing pleasant or brotherly. His voice rose. He called names. He made false charges, and this was the first quarrel. Many and more and more angry did Cain become until at last he rose up against Abel, his brother, and slew him. Cool thunder. When he struck him with his first, his fist, whether he struck him with his fist, a club, or stabbed him with a knife, the Bible doesn't say. We are left with a picture of that all handsome young youth staggering limply to the ground. Death had come to the human family, and first home, the first home had been broken for the first time. A uh, sad, sad day. Who brought the news to Adam and Eve? Nobody knows. But the shock of them must have been terrible. I can see them running out to the blood-stained field, picking up the poor stiffened body, unable to believe it would ne never breathe, never smile, never speak to them again. And I can hear the heart broken sob of the poor father and mother as they cried, as David did long after word for Absalom. Oh, my son, Abel, my son, my son, Abel, with God I had died for thee. Oh, Abel, my son, my son, my son. And then it does have a little watercolor il illustration. And sorry if this little part offended you, but this is in this book, and I was just reading what it says. And you got to think, this is 1953. And they read stories like this in the newspaper and stuff. So don't get on to me about what I'm reading in this book and everything. Okay, that was part two, story eight. And we're going to the next one in just a bit.